boys and girls, welcome to the latest episode of Dr. Jones's Educational Psychology Show. And now, introducing Dr. Jones. Well, hello, boys and girls. My name is Dr. Jones. Thanks for the introduction, Duncan. Today, we're going to be talking about Gender Schema Theory! But before we do, we need to know what a schema is. Huh? A schema is a cognitive structure, a network of associations that organize and guide an individual's perception. Do you know what that means, Duncan? I think so, but I could use an example. Absolutely! So say a student sees an animal for the first time. Let's say she sees a horse. The horse has long legs, it's big, and it has hair. The next time she sees an animal that has long legs, hair, and is big, like let's say a cow, she might think that's a horse based on her schema of what a horse should be. Oh, so it's like the brain puts things in boxes. Exactly. The brain can do the same thing for gender as well. That's what we call gender schema theory. Wow. So let's investigate further to what is gender schema theory. Could you read this out for the audience at home, Duncan? Sure thing, Dr. Jones. Sandra L. Bem argues that children learn to process information in terms of an involving gender schema, which results in sex typing. What sex typing, you ask? Sex typing is derived, in part, from a readiness on the part of the individual to encode and organize information, including information about the self, in terms of the cultural definitions of maleness and femaleness that constitutes the society's gender schema. Therefore, different societies have different gender schemas. Furthermore, we use certain terms to describe girls that we would not use to describe boys, such as nurturing, whereas we would use a word maybe like strong for boys, but not girls. Thank you, Duncan. So, in simpler terms, gender schema theory is our preconceived notions of how a boy should act and how a girl should act according to society. So, how have they studied gender schema theory? Very good question, Duncan. Bem herself designed the Bem Sex Role Inventory to facilitate empirical research on psychological androgyny. Bem used this test to categorize individuals. After taking the test, an individual would be classified as either sex-typed, cross-sex-typed, androgynous, or undifferentiated. If an individual is sex-typed, they are more likely to subscribe to culture-specific gender stereotypes. Dominant, leader, strong, Decisive. I believe a male should be all of these things. Duncan took the BSRI test and got the result of male sex type. He got this result because he believes that males should act in a certain way. Now let's talk about some of the consequences of gender schema theory on child development and education. According to Bem, children evaluate themselves against this schema, which can negatively impact children's self-esteem and self-concept. The gender schema perpetuates the gender dichotomy. Therefore, those who defy or transgress these gender schemas and stereotypes are often shamed or ridiculed. Furthermore, the female voice is often underrepresented in schools. Consequently, this may lead to female students having a narrow perspective of career paths available to them. Furthermore, sex-typed individuals were significantly more likely to remember pictures that were consistent with the culture's gender stereotypes. For example, 
boy students remembered more masculine pictures than feminine pictures. Research also demonstrates that children's recall of gendered story information is often imprecise because their gender schema interferes with accurate recall of that information. Because of these consequences, we recommend that we need to find ways as teachers to challenge these gender stereotypes in our society. Now that we know what gender schema is, let's check in with how it manifests itself in the classroom and how we as teachers can help challenge gender stereotypes. We're going to meet up with our good friends Alexa and Shad. Story time! Hey Chad, don't forget to wear your pink shirt for Pink Shirt Day tomorrow. Ugh, Alexa, you know that boys don't wear pink. Just like girls don't play soccer. Would you mind helping me help the bakes out lunch then? I have to study for math. I'm not very good at it. No, girls aren't very good at math. <laughs> no, I won't help out. I don't want to be associated with those girly things. Can you at least carry out the table for the bake sale then? That's a boy's job. Oh, fine. I need a way to show off my muscles anyways. Dr. Jones! What can a teacher do to help challenge these attitudes? Well, I'm glad you asked, Duncan. There are a lot of things teachers can do to help challenge these attitudes in the classroom. But the most important one is to let the students know that these gender schemas exist. Hello, class. I have a question for you. Do you know what a gender stereotype is? No. no. Well, I heard your conversation earlier, and I heard you use a lot of gender stereotypes. Really? Yes. A gender stereotype is society's impression of what it means to be a boy and what it means to be a girl. So, what we're going to do today is watch a short film, and I want you to write down everything it says about what it means to be a female. Okay? Okay. Let's do it. After showing videos with traditional gender stereotypes in it, you can have a discussion with the class about these stereotypes and where they come from. This helps break down the illusion of gender stereotypes being something that we all have to conform to. In addition to making students explicitly aware of gender stereotypes, there are also things you can do to help defy gender schema, such as Create a safe learning environment. Use gender neutral language. Design educational games and learning activity that increase students' exposure and familiarity with so-called feminine objects. And treat male and female students exactly the same. So you're saying that by challenging gender schemas in the classroom, you're providing both male and female students with equal opportunities to succeed. Also, we create an atmosphere which everyone is free to be themselves without fear of being shamed or ridiculed for not adhering to specific gendered standards. That's exactly right, Duncan. Great job! So, to recap for the folks at home, what did we learn today? Gender schema theory and how to challenge it. Wonderful! That's all for our show, the Dr. Jones's Educational Psychology Show. See you.